Hey guys, as you can see here, it's uh, getting time to put the Acura CL up for winter. Um, we've got it tucked away up against the front end of our garage here, and we've got a car cover on it. But really what that's meaning is that this is the start of the winter work. And for the winter work, it's really about addressing all the rust on this 17-year-old Northeast car. Anybody that's lived in the Northeast will know that you know, rust is a major problem. Um, prevent prevention of rust can only go so far until you really just have to mitigate the rust um, because it just piles on. And after a while, it, uh, it just, you have to address it. And so 17 years old, this car is, um, we, we start to see how much rust is actually formed on this car. Um, you know, thankfully the body is in really good shape with this car. There's really no rust. Um, there was some rust on the front end that was addressed. So we'll show you a little bit about what we've done on the front end of this car, what is actually going on here in the rear, and to give you guys a little update on the Acura CL project. To add a little context to what I was just speaking to, here's the rear bumper support um, bracket for the car. Uh, as you can see here, this is typically a continuous piece of metal that goes through here, bolts on here and here. And this becomes really your, your structure for the rear bumper. Um, the problem here, as you can see, is that uh, driving in the northeast, there's a lot of salt spray uh, that will occur from just driving the car. You know, even though this car is a low mileage car, 98,000 miles, and it was less than 90 when it was sold, um, there's still significant rust here and you really can't do much with this. You know, the original thought that I had before taking the bumper off was to grind this all down, use a rust encapsulating paint designed for undercoat and longevity. Um, you know, citing this issue right here, it's really going to be a replacement bracket and uh, I'm going to source that from Acura because it is still available. And I like to go with OEM parts, and this car is all about originality. I don't want to put an aftermarket one on there. I possibly could find a used one. Um, maybe I luck out and it's in good shape. Maybe I don't luck out. Um, but really, let's just get a new one. It's not that expensive uh, to get one, and it'll really keep the car where I want it to be, which is you know original and fresh. So let's talk about where we're at right now on the rear of this car. So to get the bumper off, um, sadly you do have to take the rear headlights out. Um, just because there's a screw that goes to this little plastic bracket on each side, that prevents you from really pulling it out. I mean, you can pull this out, but uh, it's better just to not break anything in the process. That's always the best, best um, place to be, is not with broken parts. So if we look right here, and right here, this is where the bumper bracket goes on. Um, evident that there was significant rust here. That has now all been ground, ground down. Uh, took a grinding wheel to that and just uh, basically cleaned it all up on both sides. This side a little bit more because I had to, um, in the process of taking out the rear uh, support beam, I snapped a stud and so now I have a replacement stud um, in place. Um, we can see here that there's a, you might not be able to actually see this, but all underneath, this is where the actual panel comes under. Um, it's, it's just loose hanging metal there, um, which is tack welded on each side. And there's actually holes right here going all the way along from where the rust has actually taken form and eaten away at the paint. I've actually ground down um, most of this rust right here. So this is uh, pretty much ready for paint. I would say. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more work to just tidy up the back. I want to address a little bit more on that side. This side is fairly good. Um, that'll allow us to paint it all at once on this, on the rear end of this car, and then put the beam back on, um, and then subsequently put the bumper back on. So we're, we're in really good shape on the back. Um, thankfully, the rear structure of the car and the, the uh, metal the sheet metal um, has not rusted away to the point that it can't be saved. So now I'll swing around to the front and I'll tell you about the work that's going on in the front. 
Okay, so coming to the front end of the car, um, this front end of the car has taken um, a significant turn in the positive direction. Um, originally, we started with a hood that had a pretty significant rust spot on the front side of it. It was actually to the point where it had eaten through. So essentially, I think what happened there was that there was a rock chip. Um, the rock chip then spread, and then because it went unaddressed, it actually ate through um, to the underside of the hood and which made it so that we couldn't save the hood. So this is a new factory OEM hood straight from Acura. And I decided to go straight from Acura after talking with my body shop owner because, um, you know, sourcing an aftermarket hood is very common on older cars. And so when you get into the salvage sector and trying to find a hood from a salvaged car, one, we're hoping that it's gonna be in good condition and two, we're actually hoping that it's going to be an OEM hood. Those are two things that are unknown until you actually get the hood in. You see the condition of the hood, plus you see whether it's an actual OEM hood or not. So when you look at the prices, they were ranging between $200 and $300 for a replacement hood. The hood itself from Acura was about $600. So, you know, all said and done, it's probably better um, money to invest in the actual OEM hood than to try to source one and hope that it's in good condition and actually an OEM hood. So the whole front end of this car subsequently got repainted. So, you know, the front bumper got repainted, two fenders and the hood, um, obviously the hood since it was new. Um, with that, I decided to go with a factory OEM um, trim around the front of the, the grill here. Um, it had pitted to the point where it actually looked different um, from the paint that was applied to the hood. So I thought, you know, let's go ahead and get that as cheap enough. It was only, I think, maybe about $75, $80 to get a new one, and it looks fantastic. Uh, subsequently, uh, I got a new um, emblem, a new Acura emblem to go on the front, so that looks great. So now I'll, I'll take the camera and I'll show you what has been going on underneath the hood. Okay, here's under the hood of the car. It's always looked pretty good. Um, I have had to replace some parts in the past as I've spoken to in other videos. Uh, but right now, really what the concentration um, focal point, I should say, is to replace the rust underneath. So all new hardware, working on uh, getting these two uh, support or uh, sway bar bolts. But as you can see here, these are all factory fresh. And can't really see it, but this bracket ha had significant rust. It was actually rusting out the uh, rear section to this uh, uh, upper strut mount um, to the point where I was actually a little worried that it had eaten through. But thankfully, it was almost um, what I would call surface rust with a little bit of pitting going on. So this bracket right here that holds this part and the, uh, well, that's an electrical box, but this is your clutch reservoir um, that holds the clutch reservoir on, um, has been repainted, ground down, repainted, and uh, looks fantastic. And I had some uh, rattle can Nighthawk black pearl paint from um, a 99TL that I used to own. And so I just, you know, took a, a scouring pad and, and brushed it up and then put some rust um, preventative primer on there and took that rattle can paint. And it looks fantastic. I mean, I don't even think uh, anybody would know that it was repainted um, if you were to take that bracket off. But thankfully, it's hidden underneath the bracket anyway. So, you know, all is well there. Um, other changes in the front end here. So, um, as I said, we repainted everything in the front and because we repainted everything in the front I decided to take the opportunity to replace some of the you know trim um, this was cracked um, on the original one which is over here as you can see this part um, got broken at some point and the piece went missing so I ordered another one funny enough though it broke in the same spot um, when it came in, it, it arrived, um, but luckily the second half of that was still in the package. I was able to contact the company um, where I'd ordered it from Acura. They were able to refund me the money for the 
the part because it arrived broken, which was fantastic. So this was essentially a free part. The only challenge here is that I had to plastic weld. And I can tell you I am not a plastic welder, but this is pretty darn good, I would say. I mean, it doesn't look factory, but it's not going to. And considering the fact that, you know, it's if I order it again, it's going to break again. And I'll have to go through the process. At least this way, I'm not missing that part. It's actually there, but, you know, can I make this look better? Maybe. Or, you know, do I just leave it alone? Maybe you guys can let me know that. I don't know. I'm thinking leave it alone. Uh, it looks pretty good, or at least it looks acceptable. Here's what it looks like up close. Not the best I know, but not the worst. So I thought I would take a second and show you how the hood came out. Here's our new hood. Here's that new trim surrounding, which comes from the factory painted. Here's the new emblem. Uh, I have a new one of these. But oddly enough, it was in the same package as that trim piece for the hood or underneath the hood that goes um, around the, the latch there. And it was bent significantly to the point where it doesn't really fit very well. Yeah, the chrome looks better than this one, but this one looks pretty good as well. And so I'd rather have it fit better and look proper than have new new aluminum or chrome or whatever that is. Uh, so this is what it's looking like. It's looking pretty good so far. Uh, sadly, I won't be able to drive it though until uh, we get on the other side of winter. Oh, there's the Acura RDX A spec hanging out in the background. And as always, the Ridgeline Black Edition. So that's pretty much the update on the Acura CL Type S. Um, you know, really, I think the next videos will be some of uh, me showing you what it's taken to, uh, you know, mitigate this rust issue that's going on underneath the car. It'll be a little difficult to show you, but um, I think that will be the most interesting content to see about this car because it's really going to be a laborious process. It's really going to take a lot of time and effort. Um, and utilize different approaches to um, mitigating the rust. Um, I've got a couple new parts that I have from Acura. One of the problems with um, cars in the Northeast is that you have to replace a lot of parts underneath and that they're really hard to come by. Um, so this uh, is one of the future plans I have, which is the surround that goes on the backside of the brakes. It is a, a, you know, a, a metal part. It's made of aluminum, and it's usually the first thing that goes in the Northeast um, on these cars. So I have factory ones um, ready to go on the car, both front and rear. That's a big job. That's going to re um, involve removing the wheel bearings. Um, and if anybody has replaced wheel bearings on a rusted car, you you know that that is no small task. Um, it's going to take a lot of effort, but it's going to be well worth it because it's going to be a visible part on the car when you look through the wheels. You'll be able to see this, um, which will really make it stand out in my mind as you know an OEM original quality in good condition car. Otherwise, um, it's going to take a lot of uh, techniques, multiple techniques, a lot of effort to um, really take care of the rust that's underneath this. It's gonna involve you know, grinding, it's gonna involve um, painting, it's gonna involve um, maybe replacement of parts as opposed to trying to save parts in the case of the rear bumper beam. Um, so you know, it's gonna be interesting. I think that's gonna make some um, great content about this car. It's really gonna show you uh, what we have to live with in the Northeast that other areas don't have to live with. Um, and specifically when you have a car like this that's rare, and really, you want to try to save it and do the best you can by it. Um, you know, eventually, if this goes on to another owner, it does increase some of the uh, resellability and the value of the car. But that's really not what this is about. Um, this is really about pr preservation, Tune, I guess, for that content. And, um, you know, continue to check in on the videos that I publish. I think they'll be very interesting. Uh, give a perspective to some of those who don't know and understand what we deal with here in the Northeast.